Hello once more. So today's a second lesson on the topic of circles. We've had the first lesson where we've found the general equation for a circle. Today we're going to have a look at another type of equation you might encounter for a circle and we're going to try and jog your memories about some circle theorems you might need to know for A level, which you will have seen before in fairness at GCSE. So this is a good way of making sure you can remember them to use them for the A level. Let's have a look first of all at the warm-up questions. There's four to have a go at today. Here they are. So as ever, try these yourself. Avoid the temptation to just look at the answers, have some discipline, and do your best independently. Once you've had the best go you possibly can, use a video to double check your solutions against mine and make any corrections where necessary. So once you've had a go at those, let's have a look together at the solution to question one. So question one, we're told that PQ is a diameter of this circle. If point P is minus 3, 4 and Q is 10 minus 2, find the coordinates of the centre of the circle, C. So if PQ is the diameter, then we can work out the centre of the circle by working out the midpoint of PQ. So we might as well just write that down. So the centre of the circle is one of the same thing as it being the midpoint of PQ. Now we can make up the midpoint of PQ by averaging the x coordinates of P and Q. So minus 3 plus 10 divided by 2. And doing the same with the y coordinates. So 4 plus minus 2 all over 2. So minus 3 plus 10 is 7, divided by 2 is 3.5, or 3.5 as a fraction. And then 4 plus minus 2 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So we get that the coordinates of the centre are 3.5, 1. Question 2, almost the same. We've got JK, which is another diameter of a circle. Only now, we've only been told one end of a diameter, K, which is 6, 7 and the centre of the circle, which is minus 2, 4. We need to find the coordinates of point J, which is the other end of the diameter we haven't been told about. So what I could do is draw the circle out. Alternatively, we could use that same formula for before, but let's have a look at doing it this way. So draw the circle and annotate on it what we know. So first off, we know the centre is minus 2, minus 4, and so we can add that to our diagram. Also, we know that k is the point 6, 7, so we can label the point k somewhere which makes sense. I've put k over here. 6 is greater than minus 2, so probably be a good idea to put k to the right of the centre. And 7 is greater than minus 4, so equally, probably a good idea to put k above the centre. So, the next thing we're told is that jk is a diameter. So, we can do a line through here. J will be at the other side going for the centre to where K is, because, as I've said, JK is a diameter. So now we can have a look at the distance going horizontally between the centre and K. So from minus 2 to 6, going across, we can see that from minus 2 to 6 is a distance of 8. And so this must be 8 along. And in the same way, from minus 4 up to 7, that's a vertical increase of 11. So halfway along the diameter is 8 across and 11 down. So the full way along should be another 8 across and 11 down. Like so. So using the centre of the circle, if we subtract another 8 from minus 2, we'll get the x-coordinate of j. So j's there. So the x-coordinate of j is going to be minus 2 minus another 8, which is minus 10. And the y-coordinate of j will be minus 4 minus another 11, which will be minus 15. So j is minus 10 minus 15. Number 3. A circle has equation x plus 3 squared plus y minus 9 all squared equals 45. We need to state the radius of the circle in exact form and give the coordinates of the circle's centre. So what we need to remember now from last time 
is that this is actually written in the standard form of a circle. The standard equation of a circle is x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared equals r squared, where r is radius and the center is a, b. So we need the radius of a circle in exact form. So r squared must be 45. So from that, we can just square root to find out what r is. So if r squared is 45, therefore r must be the square root of 45. But the square root of 45, we can rewrite 45 as 9 times 5. So root 45 is the same as root 9 root 5. This pen's going a bit strange again. Apologies. And root 9 is obviously 3. And so in exact form, r is 3 root 5. And the centre of a circle, the coordinates of a centre, we know it because we know what a and b are. So in our case, a must be minus 3 and b must be positive 9. Remember, if a were minus 3, minus minus 3 is plus 3. And if b was 9, y minus 9, this works. Essentially, what you can do to find the coordinates of the centre is inspect these numbers in the brackets and just switch for signs. So 3 becomes minus 3, minus 9 becomes positive 9. In other words, the centre of a circle is just simply minus 3 and 9. And question 4. We have points C and D lying at extreme ends of the circle's diameter. So we need to find the equation of a circle that passes through both C and D in the standard form x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared equals c, where a, b and c are constants to be found. Then hence or otherwise, state the radius of this circle. So I'm going to start off by just doing a diagram of this circle. Label on what we know. So first of all, we're told that c is at 10, 21. So label that in. Then we can label on that d, being at 26 and minus 9, should be somewhere down here. So let's label on d. We're also told that cd is a circle's diameter. So we need to do a straight line through c and d and making sure it goes through the centre of the circle, like so. So what we should try and do next is to find out the centre of this circle. The centre of the circle will tell us these constants a and b. And so it's clear to see that the centre of the circle will be the midpoint of the line segment going from C to D. So let's work this out first of all. So the centre of the circle, that's going to be the midpoint of C, D. Midpoint of CD, we can average out the x-coordinates of C and D, so 10 plus 26 over 2. And average out the y-coordinates, 21 plus minus 9 over 2. Ten plus twenty-six is thirty-eight. Thirty-eight what am I talking about? What am I talking about? Dear me, ten plus twenty-six is thirty-six. I'll get my head screwed on. Thirty-six divided by two is eighteen. It's too hot today. That's my excuse. Twenty-one plus nine is going to be twelve, and twelve divided by two, that's going to be six. So the coordinates of the centre of a circle are 18 and 6. So we may as well label this on to our circle now. So in a neater way, here it is labelled on. Now what we can do is find out the radius of this circle. 
So finding the radius, we just need to think about the distance from C to the centre. So here it's labelled as so. So if we think about the vertical drop as we go from 21 down to 6, this distance here going down is 15. And going across from C, which is 10, to the centre, which is 18, that's a horizontal distance of 8. We can now use Pythagoras to find the radius, which we've labelled here, R. So we can now work out the radius squared. R squared will be 15 squared plus 8 squared. Now 15 squared is 225. 8 squared is 64. 225 plus 64, check on your calculator, that's going to be 289. But in this form of the circle, C is the radius squared, and so we've actually now worked out the formula of this circle. A is the x-coordinate of the midpoint, so we know that A is 18. Similarly, B is the y-coordinate at the midpoint, which we know is 6. And so the circle we can write down. So the equation of the circle this is going to be x minus 18 squared plus y minus 6 all squared equals the radius squared which is 289. It then asks us to find the radius of a circle. Because this is r squared we can just square root 289 to find the radius. So the radius is the square root of 289 which I checked earlier that's 17. If you don't believe me here's my uh, class was. So square root 289 and Bob's your uncle, 17. If you don't have an uncle that's called Bob or if you don't know your uncle for any reason, just trust me, you don't need an uncle, it'd still be 17 if you have an uncle, a million uncles or no uncles. So 17 is your answer. We're now going to think about the equation of a circle in expanded form. And so this is another form of the equation of a circle you might see and it looks completely different but the good news is it's easy to turn into the more useful form so I'm going to talk you through this now. So there's the general form of the equation which we've seen already x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared equals r squared. That's factorised into two brackets as you can see so if you imagine it um, being expanded out um, another form of this equation might look like this Okay, and so you might see it with x squareds and y squareds and so many x's and y's and different constants all dotted around the place. So it can look more confusing, and generally speaking, it's not as useful. But what they will tend to do, the examiners, is they might throw in a question now and again in the expanded form. And what you need to spot is you need to complete the square on both the x terms and the y terms to get it back to an x bracket and a y bracket respectively so you can use it in this more useful form. So just remember to do that and so as it says here like I've just said before questions that give the equation of a circle in this form above tend to require you to rewrite the equation in factorised form. So like I've said you complete the square for the x terms and the y terms taken separately. So I'm going to give you an example at the end of this video to show you a question like this. First of all though, I've got a fairly straightforward past paper question just to get you warmed up into thinking about how to tackle such questions. So here's the first one which I've said is rather easier. Not easy, but not too bad. So you've got points A and B that have coordinates 5, minus 1 and 13, 11. So first off, we're asked to find the coordinates of the midpoint of AB. So all we need to do here is just average out the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates. So we've done this a few times before, so this should be very familiar to us now. So the midpoint of A and B 
is we average out of the x coordinates, so 5 plus 13 over 2, and then minus 1 plus 11 over 2. So 5 plus 13 is 18, 18 divided by 2 gives us 9, minus 1 plus 11 is 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5. And so the midpoint of AB is 9, 5. Part B, we're now told that AB is actually a diameter of C. Now we need to find an equation for C. So now we know that we've got A and B, and this makes a diameter of a circle, it's probably a good idea to just do a diagram. So here's my diagram I've made earlier. So there's the centre. Down here is A, up here is B. We need to find an equation for C. So the centre is a useful, in fact a vital part of finding the equation of a circle. Another vital thing is to actually find the radius. So if we were to do that, we can simply consider the distance from the centre to either the point A or the point B. So I'm going to pick the point B to consider. And so if I just think about the horizontal distance across and the vertical distance as we go up, then from 9 up to 13, the horizontal distance from 9 to 13 is 4, and the distance going up from 5 up to 11 is 6. And obviously this is the radius. So we can see here that the radius squared using Pythagoras, r squared must be 4 squared plus 6 squared, which is 16 plus 36, which is 52. Now the standard form of the equation of a circle gives x minus a squared plus y minus b all squared equals r squared. And so because we don't need to find the radius, 52 is actually an easier way to leave it in. So therefore, C is x minus 9 squared plus y minus 5 all squared equals the radius squared, which is 52. And that's all there is to work to example 1. Let's now have a look at worked example two. Now for worked example two, we need to apply what I mentioned before. This is the equation in expanded form. And so what we need to do here is to complete the square on the x squared minus 10x part. The y squared bit is still absolutely fine, okay? Because y squared is already just a square with nothing else involved. So we need to think about this x squared minus 10x and complete the square on that. So x squared, we write the x, then we half the coefficient of the x term here. So half of minus 10 is minus 5. We square all of that. We then minus off this term all squared. So minus 5 all squared is minus 25. So We've just rewritten these two terms in completed square form. We then have plus y squared. And that is going to equal minus 9 by just taking that 9 to the other side. So I've left the y squared as it is. Now, if we add this minus 25, if we, sorry, if we add 25 to both sides, what we'd get is x minus 5 all squared plus y squared and on this side minus 9 plus 25 that gives us 16. So center A, the coordinates of A, the x coordinate of A is 5 which have minus 5 here and the y coordinates of A y squared we can think of as y minus 0 all squared. And so it's going to actually be on the x-axis, y is just going to be 0. Part b, we need to find the radius of c. 
So for radius, because we have it in this useful form, the radius is just the square root of the value at the end. So the radius is going to be the square root of 16, which is obviously just going to be 4. For part C, we're asked to find the coordinates of the points at which C crosses the x-axis. So at this stage, I think it's probably worth jotting down a little diagram based on what we know so far, what we worked out from parts A and B. So from parts A and B, we worked out that the centre of the circle was here, which was at 5, 0. So we can just fill this in here and say that's 5, 0. And as well as that, we worked out that the radius was 4, so we can add this in as well. For part C in particular, though, we're asked to have the coordinates at the point at which C crosses the x-axis. So we want to work out what the coordinates are here and here. Well, actually, once you know that the radius is 5, 0, Sorry, the centre is 5, 0, I mean to say, and the radius is 4. This is actually fairly easy to, to see what's happening. And so if that's 5, 0 and the radius is 4, we can imagine a radius going in the horizontal direction from the centre out here. So if this is where x is 5 and the radius is 4, it has to be that this point here is going to be 1, 0. And in the same way, from 5, 0 out here, this point has to be 9, 0 as well. And so it's got to be that the coordinates where this circle cuts the x-axis are both 1, 0 and 9, 0. So we just need to add that in and that's all we need to do. Another way we could have done it, a much harder way to be fair, would have been to substitute it in when y is 0. It crosses the x-axis when the y-value is 0. We could have then got an equation, rearranged, square rooted both sides. It would have been much harder and more awkward, but that's another way we could have approached this question C. Finally, question part D. We want to find an equation of the line which passes through A and T. But we're told here about A and T before that, that there's a line L with gradient 7 over 2 that's a tangent to C. And this line, which is L, touches the circle C at the point T. So first of all, we need to picture what this line L would look like. It's got a positive gradient, fairly steep, and it's a tangent to the circle. And so L might look something like this. Okay, so L might be something like this, gradient 7, 2, tangent at C. However, it could also be a tangent of the other side of a circle. So L might also be something like this on the other side. As it happens, it doesn't matter which sketch you go for. You could do a sketch of a circle and sketch L on this side or L on that side. It wouldn't actually matter. Now, something else we need to know now is that L touches C at the point T. So it's worth just labelling on T here. In a moment, we also need to remember something now from GCSE. What we need to remember from GCSE is that a tangent meets the radius at a 90 degree angle. You might see this on occasions in A-level as well. So although it was mentioned in GCSE, you still need to remember that and use it for A-level as well. So using that fact, if the tangent to the circle meets the radius at 90 degrees, then from T to the centre, the radius and the tangent will be at right angles, and so we can draw on the radius to this tangent, like so. And you'd have the same at the other side as well. So from, if you drew a tangent at this side, then this would also make a 90 degree angle with radius which comes out from the centre to meet it on this side. So you'd have this as well. So as a consequence of this, if you have a diameter, a diameter is always sandwiched at either end by two tangents that are parallel to one another. That's always going to be the case. You can even see using GCC geometry yet again, if you think about this as alternate angles, these two are parallel and this is a diameter. This one is 90 degrees and that one's 90 degrees. That can only exist if we have alternate angles. So anyway, let's think about how we can apply this now and solve for the equation of this line here, which is blue. 
the equation of a line which goes through this diameter. So the gradient of this line, the gradient of this line, because it's perpendicular to the tangent, it's going to be the negative reciprocal of the gradient of a tangent. So it's going to be the negative reciprocal of 7 over 2. So minus 1 over 7 over 2, that's minus 2 over 7. So this line here has got gradient minus 2 over 7. We also know that it goes through the center. It goes through 5, 0. So now we can apply this version of the equation with a straight line. y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1 and substitute in the information we know. So y minus unknown y coordinate the line goes through. It goes through 5, 0. And so a known y coordinate is where y is 0. The gradient is minus 2 over 7. x minus a known x coordinate, which is 5. So therefore, because we don't need this minus 0 bit, an equation of a line is just simply y equals minus 2 over 7 brackets x minus 5. And that's all we need to do. That's the question co completed. You could have, as well, if you wanted to, not that you had to, have done this in the form y equals mx plus c. So all we could have said, y equals minus 2 over 7x. And then c, the y-axis intercept, would be minus 2 over 7 multiplied by minus 5, which would be positive 10 over 7. So that's an alternative way this answer could have been written. This is probably the easiest, but if you wanted to, you could have done it in this form as well. And that's it for the worked examples. It's now over to you. If you can try these next on page 120, exercise 6c. Questions 8 through to question 13 and the first challenge question there as well. So try all of those Check your answers each time you finish a question off. You know the drill by now. If you've not got the question right, try and think out about why not. If you're not sure why, ask one of your peers or ask me, either in class, on an email, or this YouTube channel itself. So please keep up the hard work, keep working away, don't stop now, and you'll see me again either in class or using YouTube on the next video. Thanks for listening again, and I'll see you all soon.